Welcome, this is going to be our lecture video for the classes on August 31st and September 1st. For this lecture video, we're going to be taking notes on this step-by-step -step binder lesson sheet. This is available on my extra stuff calendar if you didn't get one in class or you lost your copy, or feel free to write these notes onto your just lined paper and put them into your step-by-step -step binder. I will still count that and allow you to use these notes on tests and quizzes. And this will definitely be one that will be helpful to you on our very first quiz coming up right after Labor Day. All right, the, go ahead and put your name on here, put the date, whatever date you're taking this. Uh, I'll just write the 31st since that's uh, the Monday when I'm gonna be giving this lecture. Go ahead and write whatever period you are. Uh, here we go. So the directions say write each as a verbal expression. This could also say translate each into a verbal expression or translate from an algebraic expression into a verbal expression anything like that, the keyword there is verbal, that we want to take math that we see with variables and symbols and write it like how we would say it, and uh, specifically how we would say it with very sophisticated math language. All right, so step one. When we read one of these, we use a very similar sentence every time, so we're, I'm going to call that sentence a template. So step one, use the following template to make your sentence. And it goes, the blank of blank and blank. So that is our template. We just fill in these blanks. The blank of blank and blank. Alright, for this first blank you're going to pick the word either sum, difference, product, or quotient depending on what operation you see. So if we see addition, we're going to use the word sum. If we see subtraction, we're going to use the word difference. If we see a multiplication symbol, or if we don't see a multiplication symbol, this is the one that's implied when we don't see anything, we're going to say product. Or if we see division, or just a fraction line, we're going to say quotient. So let me, that doesn't look like a minus, we're going to say that's a fraction line. All right, now for these other two blanks, that's where the numbers slash variables from the problem go. So the numbers slash variables, and we're just gonna say they've gotta stay in the same order. So looking at problem number one, the z and the 10, we're going to say the sum of z and 10. Now, there's one situation where there's not really an order, and that's with fractions. So with fractions, say the top number first. With the top, we'll call it a value, because it could be a number or a variable. So say the top value first. And then you say quotient because it's a fraction. All right, and that's going to get us through many of these, but there's another thing that we can encounter where we've got to know a specific word, and that's if we ever see an exponent. So step two, say exponents like this and put a colon so we can list a couple examples. Uh, if you've got the power of 2, you say x squared. If you've got something to the power of 3, you say that something 
cubed. So here's y cubed. And if you've got something to an even higher power, like z to the power of 6, we say z to the power of 6. All right. The last thing we can run into is an equal sign. So step three, if you see an equals sign, comma, say is equal to then whatever is on the other side. All right, I think that's enough to cover all the problems we see here. Questions six through 10 is just going backwards. So let's go ahead and try these. All right, problem number one, write as a verbal expression. Very important that we read the directions because you might accidentally try to start solving this, but that's not what we want. We want this bit of math written out uh, with words. So I see an addition. Addition means sum. So the sum of, and then we say the two numbers such variables in order, the sum of z and 10 is equal Oh, missed my E to 13. Let's try the next one. So I see a minus. I'm going to use the word difference. I fill that into this blank. The difference of, and then I fill in the two values, T and 19. The difference of T and 19. Next one, I see a dot. If that was missing, if it was just K10, it would still be implied there. This is the product of K and 10. Number four, we see a fraction. So we're gonna say the first top, the, the top value first, and we're also gonna use the word quotient. So number four is the quotient. of n and 4. Now we see an equal sign, so we can say it is equal to 8. And then number 5, I see uh, to the power of 3, I'll use this key here. So n cubed is equal to 26. All right, and then the abbreviation for is equal to is to just say is, and then it's implied that the equal to is there. Uh, but when you're writing out, I want you to write out the full is equal to. All right, write each algebraic, write each as an algebraic expression. The sum of a and six is 24, so we're just gonna go backwards. So sum, I'm gonna use a plus. These stay in the same order, a and six. Is, they don't say is equal to, but we know that is just means an equal sign and then a 24. A plus six equals 24. The difference of M and 10 is 28. So I'm gonna keep the M and the 10 in the same order. Difference means subtraction. Is means an equal sign, 28. Product of W and five is 50. So W dot five equals 50. Dot means multiply. Quotient of a and eight, I want you to start writing these as fractions. So a over eight is 47. The fifth power of n is 14. So this a little bit backwards than how I wrote it up here. When I said z to the six was z to the power of six, they go out of order and they say the fifth power of n. That's another way to still just say n to the power of five. Just a little bit backwards, but we gotta be able to handle it when we see it backwards like that and know that the five is still the exponent. 
which is that word is again, so I put an equal sign and then a 14. All right, that's that for this lecture video. Put in a few more for you to practice. Put these notes into your binder, and now you are allowed to use them on tests and quizzes. Have a good rest of your day.